Hey sportsman, John Bergsma. Welcome to today's on-site video fishing report here at the bait shop in Waterford. Greatest little tiny, but little bit bigger than normal bait shop. Walls are filled with stuff. If you're looking for ice fishing stuff, Mark and the guys at the bait shop have got it in spades. This has got more ice fishing stuff than Bass Pro. So you got to get down here. Everybody's running out. Mark's not. He's got all the stuff you need. All the pegs are filled. They're catching fish here in southeast Michigan and frankly all over Michigan. We're looking at an awesome weekend of brutally cold weather. Stay tuned for five great reports. Starting out with Lake St. Clair, the canals, all of the open water close to shore. Moving on to Saginaw Bay. Got a good report from Saginaw Bay. Then we're jumping over to the Holland Muskegon area for a Eastmanville Bayou report right off the Grand River. Then all the way across the bridge to Marquette. And we've got an open water, not open water, but a big water report of ice on Lake Superior. Awesome trout fishing starting to fire right there. And we end up in south central Michigan with Lee Gould over in the Barry Ionia County area, just a lot of inland lakes in that little piece of ground. And I'm telling you what, this is gonna be a super informational report. Stay tuned for the video report here from Fisherman's Digest. So hey, we're starting out right here in Southeast Michigan, Lake St. Clair. Now we got two guys that fish that water for us. Zach Watts and Nick Garantakis both like to fish this area of the, of, the, of the state and both of them sent reports in so we're gonna give them both a little bit of creds here. Now, Zach was spending a bunch of time mixed between the canals and the Anchor Bay to Selfridge area. Now, obviously Lake St. Clair has still gotta be treated with high caution. You don't just go busting out there if you don't know what you're doing. Always go with a group of guys, always carry a rope, take, take your time to make sure you're covered if something bad happens. But right now we've got safe ice, if you can call any ice on, on Lake St. Clair safe and a lot of guys out fishing. What are they catching? Well, Zach is catching gills and crappie in the canals. And as you see the pictures going across the screen, some really beautiful bluegills and crappie. Over Anchor Bay to Selfridge, on the main lake, he's catching perch. Now, he's using beaded spoons, uh, he's using wax worms, he, and he's fishing clear water. Now, Zach, uh, no, Nick, jumped up to the Fairhaven area, way on the north end of the lake, and he was fishing shallow water four to six feet. Again, clean water, sandy bottom, and Nick and his buddy were really whacking the perch, as you see here towards the end, the picture's going across. Nick always catches a lot of really nice perch for us and always lets us know where it happens. So, basically, I'd say the north end of Lake St. Clair, tight to shore, not tight to shore, but don't be getting too far out, guys, really. It's a little sketchy still. We've got early midweek, we've got a little bit of moderate temperatures, not gonna help the cause. But again, after this weekend, we should be dealing with safe ice. So get in here, Southeast Michigan residents, to the bait shop, right where I'm standing. Get your bait, get all your wax worms, get all of your jigs, get your uh, beaded jig and spoons. I know those guys are using slab grabbers. I just checked back in this row here. Mark's got a whole pegboard full of slab grabbers and your other faded, uh, favorite beaded jigging spoons. So Southeast Michigan, Lake St. Clair, both the, both the shoreline ice and the canals and marinas firing and firing good. Wyandotte Lure manufactures soft plastic baits and fishing tackle right here in the Detroit area. Our famous original Wyandotte Worm and the new Motor City Minnow are made with our own special blend of material that is soft enough for a fish to bite, but durable enough to use all day. Our baits are available in over 30 different fish catching colors. Just another reason why Wyandotte Lure is known as the king of the river. Go to WyandotteLure.com or ask for them at your local bait and tackle store. Our next report is from Mark from Real Fish and Charters. Now he's our open water guy there at Saginaw Bay. And Mark does an ice guide because this year, quite frankly, it's just too sketchy. It's, it, it happened late. And even though I think it's really gonna happen great for the month of February based on these really cold temperatures, Mike, Mark's just gonna pull the plug on guiding and just send us great information. So here it comes to you first thing. So 
The ice is sketchy right now on the western shoreline, meaning use extreme caution. It's, it's, there's spots you can fish. You can fish from, you know, out in front of Linwood a little bit if you're a local and you really know what you're doing. You can move around a little bit on the west shore. But he really believes that we need this upcoming weekend cold. But on the east side, he said there's several areas that the ice has a lot better condition. So Mud Creek right now, his best report is 6 to 11 feet, and the bite is very good for perch. Um, a few walleye mixed in, but the Mud Creek spot is, is kicking perch out. Also, Waterfowl Bay to Finn Road. Now, the river's also got ice on it, but again, I'm going to throw a word of caution. When you guys are watching this report on the end of day on Wednesday, you've got to take into consideration that Monday and Tuesday were real moderate temperatures and a lot of bright sunshine. And with no snow to insulate that ice, that type of circumstance can really create a problem on the river. So be darn careful on the river. But that east shore is kicking out nice fish. The river's kicking out four or five walleyes at a time. So get out there and, and check in at Frank's Great Outdoors. They've got all the bait and tackle you need up there. They're our partner up there in the greater Saginaw Bay area. And have a fun, safe time on the ice there on Saginaw Bay. Every fishing boat needs a place to put rods, store rods, and have rod holders to go fishing, and the Anger Quest Family Fish has that in spades. I'm Captain Lance Valentine, and here on the Family Fish, I'm going to show you the integrated arch. We've got the ability to put up to five adjustable track tech rod holders on each side so we can run offshore planer boards. We've got rod storage across the top, the ability to put in lights, radar, VHF radio antennas, and any accessories we need to turn this Family Fish into a hardcore fishing boat. Check out this and all the other great features on AngerQuest at your local AngerQuest dealer. So, hey, we got a great guest report. And to you, all you guys who watch our report, you can submit a guest report to us uh, just by going to our john at fishermansdigest.com. That's my personal email. And we have guest reports come in all the time. And these are great because these are just straight to the shot, honest reports. And Amy... Bolt Manus Edwards, and I know Amy and Brian Edwards, her husband, because I used to be back in the day involved with uh, college basketball, and Brian was a stud player there for Cornerstone, one of our better teams he played on. But he and Amy, his wife, and their daughter uh, really, really enjoy outdoors activities and ice fishing. Well, they loaded up some friends and their kids, and as you can see by the pictures going across the screen, they had a great time. Now, the thing I loved about this report was that they had the whole gang of kids out there teaching them how to ice fish, teaching them to just ram around outdoors and have a lot of fun. Now, where were they? They were over at Eastmanville Bayou. And to you people from Holland and Muskegon, Grand Haven, you're all familiar with that piece of water. They're bayous and sidewaters off of the Grand River. And I'm telling you what, these bayous load up with some high quality bluegills, as you can see from the pictures. Amy looks like she had a nine and three quarter incher. She said a lot of nice fish from eight to nine and a half. And as you guys all know, those are really good bluegills. The specific presentation, she, was, she and Brian set up in six to eight feet of water. They said almost as soon as they got their holes drilled, they were catching fish. They were using four mm, four millimeter whacked, uh, uh, you know, tungsten, and then they were tipping it with waxies, and they were moving it all through the column. In other words, they were, weren't just staying pegged to the bottom. They were starting at the bottom and just starting to work their bait up until they got back to the ice. And they were catching fish both on the bottom, halfway up, even close to ice. So you've got to, I love the fact that Amy pointed that out to me because that's a real tip. Because a lot of times people get way too locked in to fishing just one part of the water column. And when you're only in six feet of water, it doesn't take much to be able to work all those three columns, you know, the bottom two feet, the middle two feet, and the upper two feet before ice. So pay attention to those little details, small tungstens, waxies, fishing anywhere in the bayou areas off the Grand River, and you should have a lot of fun. And by all means, take the kids. Are you in the market for a new trailer? For all your trailer needs, big or small, visit Beck's Trailer Superstore on Highway 127, north of St. John's. 
So, hey, our guiding partner up in the Marquette area is Mike Coziero from Marquette Adventures. And to everybody in the Lower Peninsula thinking about taking a foray up to the Upper Peninsula, you got to get Mike's information on your speed dial because Marquette Adventures is a cluster of guides that, that touches all the different aspects of fishing in the greater Marquette area. During open water, these guys are fishing out on Superior. They're also fishing inland lakes. They're also fishing rivers. But right now, ice guiding, they're doing the exact same thing. They're all set up on inland lakes, hoping for enough cold to be able to venture out onto the big water and get the cohos, the whitefish, the splake, and all of the species that are inhabiting. And guess what? Mike texted me and said, put a report up there, John. We're heading out onto Superior. So guys, now's the time to ring Mike's phone off the hook. It's, it's on my website at the bottom of his written fishing report. So for Marquette, we've got three bites. We've got Inland Lake Trout. Now the Inland Lake Trout bite is real unique up there and it's very good and it happens fast. And those fish swim in packs, almost like a pack of wolves. And they cruise all day long at whatever depth you identify them at on your, on your Garmin, you know, your pan optics or whatever unit you're using. I use the Garmin down ice pan optics and it works great. But once you identify what depth they're suspending at, they will cruise through your hole a good once an hour, sometimes more in these packs. And as long as your bait is down there, you're going to get quick little flurries of great inland lake trout action. Now, if you're looking for more traditional fishing, the perch and the gills are on the bottom of inland lakes right now, out in 12 to 15 feet of water. And Mike and his guides are targeting, and as you see these pictures going across, there's some serious gills coming up on the ice, with rosies and waxies tight to the bottom. And what I mean by that is you're usually pounding the bottom and then pulling it up three, four inches and maybe up eight, eight, another three, four inches and then working your way back down, pounding the bottom. That little bottom contact action can be a really big trigger, especially for bigger bluegills and bigger perch. So that's the tactic for the perch and gill bite. Now let's head out onto the big water. Mike tells me that the coho, the splake and the whitefish are offshore under the ice and they're catching them the same traditional ways they always do. That's jigging a spoon, typically tipped with a minnow head, a live minnow. You can dead rod them as well next to you while you aggressively jig one. But these fish are a ball to catch, and you can tie into some really big trout doing this. So the offshore action is just getting started up in Marquette. Get up there, get a hold of Mike Cozier at Marquette Adventures Guide Service, and he will take you on the adventure of an Upper Peninsula lifetime. Are you already thinking about summer? Thinking about that new boat or pontoon? Now's the time to get your best preseason deal during the Summer Dream Sale event going on at Lakeside Motorsports and Nelson Speed Shop. Order your dream boat now and be the first to get it on the water. Michigan's pontoon superstores, Lakeside Motorsports, and Nelson Speed Shop will help you design your dream boat. Come see the all-new state-of-the-art showroom and service facility at Lakeside Motorsports. Plus, Lakeside and Nelson's guarantee. Honest, fair, upfront pricing, and no hidden fees. Your summer fun begins now. So we're headed down back over the bridge to south central Michigan, and that's the Berry County, Ionia County, Allegan County, that general area above, below Grand Rapids and above Kalamazoo, right in that kind of center of the lower peninsula. And let, let me tell you, Lee Gould is our partner for this region, and Lee has got an awesome report, guys. Go to fishermansdigest.com. Click on fishing reports, click on the central lower peninsula fishing report. That's where you're going to find Lee's uh, Berry County, Ionia County report. He is whacking beautiful gills, nice perch, awesome crappies are going on right now. Now, he, the reason you got to go and read that report is because this sucker is long. He takes you on an educational tour of how you identify these fish at this time of the year. And the biggest thing that he's figured out is that during fronts, the fish will hold and bite in different areas than on the non-front days. So high pressure, low pressure has a lot to do with where you're looking to find those fish. So under high pressure conditions, Lee bumped into a lot of suspended fish just outside of the weed lines. Normally, Lee says at this time he'd be fishing in that deeper basin area, but he says he's finding these fish relating to weed edges still. And, but this time, under high pressure, 
they're suspended maybe 10, 20 feet outside of those weed edges that are holding most of the bait that they're looking for. So it sounds to me like they're holding in an area and then sliding in to feed and then holding back out. But you can catch those suspended holding fish no problem with a proper presentation. So also pay attention to little things. He's using jaw jacker micros and four millimeter uh, four mm fat boy jigs. And I'm telling you what, one of the tips he said to tell everybody is white. White with dots, whether it's Wonder Bread or white with black dots, that seems to be a big deal using the microplastics. If you want to tip it with a waxy, great. If you just want to aggressively jig it and, and fish the old school way, no problem at all. But thanks Lee, thanks to Lee's son for catching a few fish as well. And hey, we'll see ya with the Central Report here in another couple of weeks. We're excited to see where Lee goes. So hey, just a little ditty before I give you my word to the wise and close. We've got a Southeast Michigan tournament coming this coming weekend on Wald Lake. Now, if you go to the Bayside Bar, uh, you can register from five to eight at night. And here's the kick. There's two pikes women around there that are tagged and they're 10,000 bucks if you catch them. Well worth your time. Now, I'm, I've been told that those pike like bait shop minnows and Mark's going to come and be open early, 5 a.m. on Saturday morning to sell you those winning minnows that those pike have been conditioned to bite. So get your butt down here early to the bait shop, 5 a.m., get registered at Bayside Bar and have a great time on the water and guess what? A $10,000 northern probably would change the way you look at and the way your wife looks at whether you are out fishing all day. So hey, we're going to wrap it up, but again, standing here at the bait shop in Waterford is really kind of fun because I haven't been surrounded by this much ice fishing junk since I went into my shanty. It's like nuts in here. As you can see, ice fishing rods and reels of all styles and kinds, perfect for you guys who are looking to upgrade your equipment. Mark has got great deals on this stuff because of course in February, even though we've been waiting forever for ice, and we've got another month of good ice, it looks like. Mark needs to get rid of this to open up this stuff so that he can put his open water stuff out on the shelves and, of course, up and coming, the Detroit River stuff. So, hey, one thing I want to caution you guys, and I'm going to haul them out of my pocket. Motor City Minnows right here, the guys from Wyandotte Worms, he's created a new product, and this little minnow is really slick. For those that use uh, minnow baits on your and tip your big jigs, with minnow baits, this minnow is redesigned. It's not as bulky on the belly, which is gonna give you great hook set setting ability. Plus the tail area of it is flat. And that flatness is gonna create great current action off of the thing. Plus soft as soft can be, but yet durable. He's got a, a, a con concoction of plastics that really holds up under fish catching circumstances, but it's soft, soft, soft as well. So this is something you're really gonna have to check out. Mark from the bait shop will have them here. There's lots of stores around that handle the Wyandotte Worms product, but the Motor City Minnow, and that leads me into what I really wanna warn everybody, is that the supply chain is still broken when it comes to fishing equipment. Meaning what? Meaning you gotta get in here and you gotta look at your base stocks that you're gonna be using from April on into June, whether it's bass or walleye soft plastics, and you gotta get into the bait stores now and, and replenish the things you know you're gonna need for the summer. I'm telling you, there's gonna be guys that are searching all over the place trying to find soft plastics especially, and jigs and hooks, because they wait too long to buy it. Why? Because the, the imports are getting held up at the borders, and also, there's just a great lack of production still from China and Costa Rica and all these other supplier places that create these products. And that's just a flat fact. It doesn't matter whose brand you want to use. You better get into the stores now. You better fill up on your base supply so that you're set for the summer. And that's my word to the wise. Hey, thanks for joining us this week on the Fisherman's Digest. Thanks for watching us every week. And we'll be back next week from some description place. I don't even know. Heck, I just jump in my car and drive. But get down here to the bait shop in Waterford, get your bait, get your ice fish and stuff, and we'll see you next week.